How's it going, David from Common Book Investments? So, that little intro was for a subscriber who asked me to, I like your old speed up intro, so I sped it up even faster. So, to that one subscriber, I hope you're happy. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So, got some stuff back from CGC. This is some of the stuff, got more stuff. Um, got a ton of Spawn and Star Wars stuff. I've shown a lot of Star Wars stuff in the past, I don't wanna show that, but I got some Spawn in there. Also, kind of works out perfectly because if you guys haven't noticed, I did a video on how Todd McFarlane had this big news saying that he's rewriting the script again. Oh, that's huge news. I'm surprised, surprised. You know, after he's already written the script and it was perfect. It was perfect three years ago, but now he needs to rewrite it. Anyways, I mean, you guys heard my rants a million times on the new Spawn movie. It's, I mean, I'll probably have grandkids and maybe they will enjoy it. Uh, I'll probably be in an old folks home with dementia and you know, you could show me the old Spawn movie and I'll think it's the new Spawn movie at that point. So you never really know. Uh, that's how long it's going to last, um, take to make this movie. But, uh, yeah, so got some stuff. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of like, I guess reaction videos, but anytime I know like there's some people don't really like that stuff where it's just, you know, news or reactions, but anytime I'm excited about something, I have like the need to like share it. And I'm always thinking like, well, maybe one person won't out there won't know and maybe they will appreciate it or something. That's how I think. So like Henry Cavill coming back as Superman. I mean, and The Rock telling WB, strongly stir uh, convincing them that they, hey, if you want me as Black Adam, you gotta have Henry Cavill as Superman and he has to have his own movie. So I'm like, Good job, Rock. I do appreciate that because I feel like Henry Cavill got shafted. Uh, he was given not a great script and didn't have a good director in anything he appeared in. And I like Zack Snyder. I like his vision, and but sometimes it just doesn't work. He doesn't... I don't know. Anyways, Man of Steel was okay, but Batman v Superman... Oh, 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 I cannot. It just makes me mad. It makes me mad. Not as mad. Not as mad as I get when I watch any Disney Star Wars, but just so mad how they botched that. Um, I thought Man of Steel was okay, but I thought it had it could have been great. So I'm just a little like more, eh, a little disappointed that it could have been so good. But anyways, I'm rambling. I got some other big news that is completely unrelated to the channel, and most of you probably won't even care at all, but it's big news to me. And it has nothing to do with my life, but you know, if you stay to then, you'll see. But anyways, you know, Deadpool 3 was announced with uh, Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. So it's going to be Deadpool 3. So why not showcase a Deadpool book? This first appearance of Deadpool, New Mutants 98. Um, this one, I, I don't have anything written down uh, for these. But I got, uh, it's 96, it's up for 639. Now, people are probably wondering, where do you see this Deadpool book? I think I did a 90s top 10 video, and this was, if not number one, like number two. I can't remember uh, how I placed it. But definitely a, a book that I think, I mean, what, was it 91 or was it 92? 91. It came out in 91. So you still have, that's the issue with like a lot of modern books is there's every single person that buys it goes, put it in nice. Perfect, not gonna touch it. So they're all nine eights. Anything that comes out, I mean, it, there's not gonna be any two O's. There's still like two O's of this book. Like people that read it and destroyed it because in 91, they're like, oh, I like comics, but I mostly like to read. So a lot of stuff got destroyed. Um, I still think this, yeah, there's a lot of nice copies of this because it's newer, but I still think it's a good book long-term. Deadpool is here to stay. Um, and here stay for a long time. And that brings me to my next book, a Deadpool number one. Now this, they've had many different iterations of the Deadpool number one. Uh, this is from 97. I believe there was Deadpool red circle. Was that the first one? And then it was just Deadpool, a limited series. And then Deadpool, this one, number one. And I think this was the ongoing series. You know, they, they tried them out like a lot of characters they do like, Wolverine was in Hulk and X-Men, and then he got his limited run for four issues, and then they kind of see how that did, and then he got his unlimited run. Um, $89. So not very expensive for a Deadpool, number one. It is a 9.2, so yeah. 
Uh, then what do we got here? All right, we got the first appearance of Amad Amado Amadomus. Am no, I'm going to say this. I know what it is. It's on tip of my Amadeus. I had to think of the song, Rock Me Amadeus. I was like, how's that song go? Rock me, rock me, rock me, Amadeus. I bet most of you guys have no idea what that song is. Uh, it's from mid-80s. Might be a little later 80s, but mid 80s called Rock Me Amadeus. Uh, I think the guy is German or Sweden. And so you think you know what he's saying, but you only understand the chorus. So, but I love that song. It's weird. I like it. Um, uh, anyways, what, what are we looking at? Amadeus Cho, you know, the newer Hulk, whatever. Um, 96409. Personally, I don't see them doing this iteration in the MCU or anything like that, uh, at least anytime soon. And by anytime soon, I mean the next five, maybe 10 years. Uh, so people are holding hope that he's going to like, oh, he's going to be uh, in the Young Avengers. I don't see them doing a Young Avengers. They'll just call it maybe the Young Avengers, but I don't think it's going to be Kid Avengers. It'll probably be like She-Hulk instead of um, Amadeus Cho. All right, then we got Black Cat, first Black Cat, Spider-Man 194, uh, 389. First Nova, 94339. Um, and here's an interesting one, because I put it in my Wolverine tier list. I don't remember where it fell on the tier list, um, but it's the second printing silver edition. Uh, basically, in order to get this one, if I can remember correctly, it came with uh, a board game. And honestly, now that I think about it, I think I had that board game when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure I did. So I probably had this book when I was a kid. Oh, wow. What's this? Mastermind. I had this game. I remember that game. Interesting. I didn't have this game up here. Whatever it's called. Uh, uh, Otherall? 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 Uh, other, or I don't even know how to say that. Oh, the old, lol. Oh, the lol. Yeah. Anyways, sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, what is this? X Men number 11, 9 6. I thought it'd be 9 6. Came back great as Hope More. 3 49. We got the first Kitty Pride, a 9 4. Oh, here's a good one. I thought it'd be 80885, came back 94. Well, happy days there. Uh, 554. This one, really cool cover. And every single time I say his name wrong, and I've multiple times had people correct me, and multiple times I've looked it up online and like Google how to pronounce it, and I say it wrong probably every time. Bill Sinkevich. I'm gonna go with that. Bill Sinkevich. That's Sign Sign Kevich. I don't know. Anyways, cool. Uh, I follow him on Instagram, so he posts stuff all the time, and he posted this before. Fell in love with this cover. Uh, I thought it'd be a nine eight, but got nine six one thirty nine. I always like his cover, especially around this era. I like it when he he did he just posted. Um, it was like four drawings that he did: Heath Ledger's Joker, Marilyn Monroe. I don't remember the other two, but I looked at the Heath Ledger's Joker, and I was like, I love it. I was, like, I was like, can I have it? Can you give it to me? I even, uh, well, just put it in a comment. I doubt he'd ever read it, but very cool. I love his style. One of my, one of my favorite artists when he does his like weird stuff. When he does his like more normal looking stuff, not my favorite because of this looks too like everything else. But when he does his weird stuff, I like it. Um, what if 17? Thought it'd be 98, get a 98, so happy there. Uh, 4.99. This one, X-Men 500, variant sketch cover. Um, I like to showcase books I never really have, never really see that often. This is one of them. I don't think I've ever had this book, at least to my knowledge. Uh, came back, great. I thought it'd be 429. Cool. I, you know, who is this to cover? Is it? Oh, it's uh, Willis Portachio. I don't know. Terrible names. Um, Anyways, kind 
controversial subject right here. Uh, second bishop, right? Is it second? First full bishop, but I don't know. First full, he was on the cover of the previous one, the one before this. Anyways, I like this cover better than the other cover, uh, 282, in my personal opinion. I know, controversial. $85. And we got this lovely gem. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, yes. Now, if you don't remember, like during the comic boom, I'll get this book real quick. Uh, uh, that would be 9692, uh, so not happy days. Uh, 129. This book was worth so much money. I think like a 9 8 was selling for like $4,000 or something like that. Something crazy. Now it's like he, like $600. This, this book has fallen so much. Just falling off the cliff. I, you know, I, I tried to think about it. I'm like, why did this book go so high and then drop so low? Yeah, it's like a number one. And a lot of people say it's the first comic book appearance of Rocksteady Bebop. I don't... Yeah, first comic appearance of Krang, Rocksteady, and Bebop. Um... Some people have speculated that there's another book that they appear in before it. Um, but yeah, this book went so high. I think what it was is a lot of times you'll look on eBay, you know, and that's like the biggest marketplace if you're looking for a comic book. And you look for a certain comic book and they're like, oh, there's none available. There's just none, right? There's maybe like three or something like that. And so you think it's rare. And so they start flying off the shelves and then people go, well, wait a minute. I have a copy. You're telling me this thing is worth, you know, X, Y, and Z. Kind of like that Robocop number one that I did a while ago, if you don't remember, uh, how it sold for $100,000. It didn't sell for $100,000, but it sold for five grand. And if you look at the numbers and across the board, they've been going up like crazy. And so I think what's going to, I don't know how rare that book is. Personally, I've never really come across it, so it could actually be rare, but I never really came across these because they weren't really worth that much. And then all of a sudden it goes up. So like this Robocop, maybe all of a sudden a bunch of people start send, uh, sending in their books or maybe they start, um, they have ones already graded and they start putting them on eBay. And next thing you know, this book that seems pretty rare and you don't really come across it, all of a sudden there's 10 up on eBay and then 20 and then 50. And then, you know, I think that's what happens. If you go on eBay, there's so many of these because people are like, oh, this book's finally worth something and then kind of crashes the market. All right, next we got, was it Leatherhead? Yeah, Leatherhead. Um, yeah, this is a 9.8. Nothing too special about it. Um, and it is not on my sheet. So I couldn't tell you anything about it. Oh, well. But it's out there. I have two copies, actually. Uh, next, what do we got here? Let go. Spider-Man is holding on to these. He's jealous of Spawn because his creator, well, not his creator, one of his, the 90s popular person left to do Spawn. Um, Spawn was a 308 uh, variant cover. Uh, came back great, I was hoping. Uh, $99. Uh, another Spawn variant, 288. Came out great, I was hoping. 119. I don't know. I just like the I like spawn covers. Um this is Todd McFarlane. Oh, story. I was about to say. Um what number is this? 306. Came no, it was 94. Did not come back great. I'm sorry. Not happy days. Uh $99 variant cover. Uh, another Matina variant cover, 308, didn't I just do that one? Uh, $99, came with a grade, I thought. Where am I gonna put these? Ooh, stack's getting tall. Hopefully it doesn't fall. All right, here we go. First appearance of Destroyer Duck and Grew the Wanderer. If you guys know, they were making or talks of making uh, a Guru. I don't know. I'm assuming it's going to be a cartoon. But then, I mean, the industry has changed a lot. During the great times, it wasn't just great times for comics. It was great times for 
pretty much everything, right? Um, the recession has, is here. It's our, we're already in it. I think I said it a long time ago. Of course, you know, government officials wouldn't admit to it, but they don't admit to anything ever. Anything, it's like the emperor wears no clothes. That's how the government is. But anyways, um, they said they're going to make this, and I don't think it will happen. I, I don't know, but I'm guessing because during like the good times, like Netflix was had a bunch of money. All these companies had a bunch of money because stock price was really high, so they had a bunch of money. And uh, because, you know, they could just sell their stock or whatever it was, and they could fund endless amounts of content. And even Netflix was just funding everything. And I think that's why Bone got cut. You know, they, I mean, they had the, what is it, the Usagi Chronicles, which doesn't, it's not even like really Usagi. It's like his great, 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 great grandson or something like that. And uh, I think a lot of things that were in the pipe were gonna get axed because now they don't have the money and now they're kind of like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't just put out everything. Maybe we should be a little more selective. And I think that's the way that most of these streaming services are going to go. So I think a lot of things got cut. I mean, just look at like uh, uh, Warner Brothers. They cut tons of stuff. The Green Lantern TV show doesn't exist anymore. That's cut. Um, they cut something else. Not the Batgirl movie. I know they cut that, but um, something else that they're working on that they cut. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, a lot of stuff gets cut. So I don't think that's going to happen, in my opinion. But nonetheless, I thought it would be 9.6 and 9.8, but it got 9.2. So that's terrible, terrible news. Tell me the terrible news, but in a funny way. Who knows what movie that is from? I don't know if that's the exact line for line. It's like, uh, <laughs> if, you know, if you know, don't Google it. Just comment below. What if you tell me the bad news, but in a good way? I think that's how it goes. Bad news in a good way. Yeah, I can do that. Um, what is this? I am showing Casey in this because I like this cover. This is a cool cover. Uh, Punisher, Frank Castle, is a uh, war machine. And I think that's very fitting for him. Very cool cover. It's a second print variant cover. Um, what grade is it? Nine eight. Oh, uh, I thought it'd be nine six. So happy days. Um, Three seventy nine. So came back better than I thought. And then here we get into a bunch of Spawn stuff. I just like, I like homage covers. I do because it's like it reminds me of like cover bands. Like you listen to a band. I was just listening to a band earlier, and they covered another song, and so it's kind of like you gave your own spin on it. So pretty cool. Uh, all these pretty much came close to the grade I thought it would come back. Uh, One ninety nine. And then we got also Spawn 220, same one, but this is the Young Blood variant. I think these are all Todd McFarlane. Um, 249. Then we got the AF15 variant. Very cool. Um, 299. Also, the news I was talking about that I'm pretty excited about, I just read that most of you could care less about, I'm sure. So, you guys don't know, I'm a huge Blink-182 fan, huge. Uh, they're one of my favorite bands. The Goo Dolls and Blink-182 are my two favorite bands in the whole world. And if you don't know, Tom DeLong has left many a times, but has recently left, I don't know, it was actually like four or five years ago, he left the band to pursue looking for aliens. Anyways, um, he, they just, there's rumors and that, and some legit sources saying that Tom is back in Blink-182. So, and they deleted every post off their Instagram. So I'm assuming they're going to have a big announcement soon. And so that is nice. I like that. Um, and I doubt you guys care. I don't even know what book I'm looking at. Oh, this is the uh, Spider-Man uh, 316, 222, uh, 149. I got two of them, both nine eights. Nothing more to say about that. Uh, we got the Walking Dead variant, a spawn. 223, 115. These aren't as expensive as I was hoping, but still very cool. I like them. 
And he kind of tries to match the style a little bit. Uh, 224, 179. Sorry, my printer is kind of acting up, so it's like kind of hard to read off these things. And then we got the Hulk 340 cover. Uh, 226, 249. And obviously Spider-Man 300. I mean, it's weird. Most of these covers are covers Todd McFarlane did for whatever it was, you know, Spider-Man 300. But then occasionally you get like, you know, the Frank Miller one or, um, Rob, no, not Robert Kirkman. He's the writer. Uh, was it Tony, uh, Tony, Tony, Tony Moore? Did he do Walking Dead number one cover? Was it him? I think it was. Um, 227, 195. All right, and obviously he did this cover. I, I actually remember him drawing this cover. I was there when he drew it. Uh, Action Comics number one. I was front and center when he drew this cover. 228, uh, $299. Hey, it's right there, $299. Well, that's actually cents, but that's kind of crazy. Oh, what are the odds? And then obviously he did this one as well um, for Incredible Hulk annual number one, 229, oh, 169. Great cover by Stranko. Love the cover. Well, I mean, the Spawn one's cool too, but Stranko, I like Stranko. Um, and that Hulk cover, really, really cool. Uh, Stranko also did Captain America 110 with the Hulk, uh, massive and menacing. I really love that cover. Um, I'm trying to think if, he did any other Hulk. He did, uh, was it Foom number seven? He did the cover to that um, with the Hulk on it, and that was a good cover. Uh, I'm trying to think any other Hulk covers that Stranko did. I kind of liked his Hulk, but the thing was I didn't get very many, not very many opportunities. He got the, you know, Hulk Annual one, uh, Captain America 110, and then the Foom cover. All really cool how he drew the Hulk, um, but I don't, I can't think of any other cover examples. Maybe some pages and stuff, but usually artists shine during their covers. That's where they spend the most time. Anyways, that is it. I hope you liked all the news I gave you, and like these comic books. Once again, on our website, collectorscomics.com. Have a great day.